Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the second episode of the story in which instead of being a simple orphan or the child of random civilians, Namikaze Minato was born as Senju Minato, a member of the Senju clan and grandson of the second Hokage, Senju Toborama. See what happens when Naruto grows up and inherits the clan with a thousand skills. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Calmly drawing his bow, Naruto concentrated on his target at hand. A rather large wild boar to be more precise. Target was around 50 meters away from him. Soon, the boar noticed him and turned towards him, preparing to attack. But that was all that Naruto needed. As the boar turned towards him, so did his head at the front, exposing his weak point the eyes. Naruto let loose of his arrow, enhanced with chakra and it hit the boar straight in the eye, instantly killing him. He approached the downed animal and waited for a moment for the remaining life to leave it. As he waited for the process to finish, Naruto focused on his sensory abilities to pinpoint if the boar was sick previously. As an omnivore type, the wild boar could very well eat anything his mouth could devour. Healthy. Naruto concluded after which he proceeded to unseal his equipment for meat preparation. As he sat down his equipment, in the distance three men stood, watching quietly as Naruto did his work. You thought him well, Kosuka. Hiruzen complimented. He knows how to act in the wilderness, with nothing but his ability to hunt as a primary tool. It will use him one day, that's for sure. He uses his sensory skills for something like this. I'm amazed. If I ever take him for a training trip, I'll make sure he's the one hunting our meal. Jiraiya commented with a smirk on his face. You honor me, Hiruzen, Jiraiyakun. Kosuka said. But all I did was point Narutakun in the right direction. Just like with his shinobi training. You are being too humble, old friend. Narutakun would not be the person he is today if you didn't guide him. Hiruzen told him. He became good shinobi, but more importantly, he became a good man. He smiled. We'll fully test him later on. Let's go and see how he's doing. Jiraiya suggested. With Naruto skinning and cleaning the boar was not a pleasant task, but it was a fulfilling one. The meat was delicious, especially when grilled. The boar this big will no doubt taste great once he was prepared. While he was slicing the, now shaved skin, of the boar, one of his other clones was preparing the fire. Another one was helping him and the last one was storing the separated meat for later use. If he periodically ate this, it could last him for nearly one year. He hunted wild boars before, but they were much smaller than this one. Something smells really delicious here. Voice of his godfather trailed in the distance. You could at least help, it would be ready much faster. Naruto pretended to be annoyed. The division of labor was a key to a successful economy. Preparing a dinner from a beast this large was no exception. Not a chance. Jiraiya said. This is part of your test after all. What kind of tutors we would be if we helped you now? No need to act all smart with me, Uncle Jiraiya. I know it's a test said the smirking Naruto. In the meantime, Jiraiya just pouted, while Hiruzen and Kosuka watched in amusement. For all his serious attitude, Naruto was more relaxed with them, especially Jiraiya. As Jiraiya said, we will test all that you have learned until now, Naruto-kun. But first, let's eat. Hiruzen said. As they ate, for men talked about various things, from their battles and missions during the three wars, to even Jiraiya's books. Hiruzen and Jiraiya at least did. During that time, Naruto's clone stored the remaining meat to his scrolls, while the four men held grilled meat at the skewer atop of the campfire. Naruto. Jiraiya said with a serious expression. From his seat at the log near the fire, Naruto looked up, still holding the skewer with grilled meat he was about to eat. What is it, uncle? 
It was not like Jiraiya to suddenly turn serious from such a carefree situation. Naruto didn't sense anyone else nearby, so the attack was not a possibility. As you know, as Kanoha's Jinchuriki, your status should have been a secret until someone rattled it up to the general populace. Jiraiya began. Naruto simply nodded. He was told that before, even the potential suspects by the Sandame. When the villagers found out, Sensei did everything in his power to stop the information from leaking out to the other nations. But as there were some merchants from the outside during that time in the village, probably well-hidden spies, too. There is a high possibility that the other villages know about you. Naruto grunted in affirmation and Jiraiya continued, while the other two men listened in silence, both having serious expressions on their faces. As there is a possibility that they know about it, there is also a probability that some dangerous Missingnans know about it too. I'm talking about the Akatsuki organization composed of ten Srank Missingnans. Since you mentioned them, I'm probably one of their targets, right? It was not hard to figure it out, Naruto mused. What a ten rogues could do with the power he had was anyone's guess, yet confusing at the same time. Indeed. Jiraiya nodded. They won't start collecting tailed beasts for some time, maybe even years before they do. I don't know what they plan to do with them or how do they plan to keep them in their control. But if you ever meet someone wearing a black cloak with red clouds on it, during your missions, run. It was not advice. It was an order. Naruto was silent for a moment, before nodding. It was strange seeing his godfather this serious, but if he was worried, then he should be too. Do you know any of their members? Two of them. They usually work in pairs of two. The only one I know of, however, are the Hashigaki Kisame and Uchiha Itachi. And they are paired together. Naruto widened his eyes. He had heard some stories about the monster of the hidden mist, but to this day he never would have thought he would be partnered with the Kanoha's infamous clan killer, Uchiha Itachi. The more he thought about it, the more dread arose within him. If the two of them were paired, then there is a possibility that he would be their target. Itachi was a former ANBU and he knew Kanoha's defenses, maybe even to bypass them. And he probably knew many things about him as well. For a short time, he was one of Naruto's guardians when Kosuka was away. The memories Naruto had of the Kinslayer was that of a distant, but kind all the same young boy. Old as Naruto was now. Do you know any of the other members? Surely there are some indications of who could join them. Naruto queried, trying to clear his mind. Unfortunately, I don't, Jiraiya replied with a frown. That was one of the more considerable recent problems for him. While Itachi reported that Kisame was paired up with him and of their task of currently only tracking down the Jinchurikis, there was nothing more. Aside from the fact that they are still a few years behind their original goal and won't start hunting them for the time being. It was infuriating, as now he did not know if Itachi could be trusted completely. For all his talk about being loyal to Kanoha, a lack of more detailed information was suspicious. It could be that he cooled off after the massacre and started regretting his decision to ally with Kanoha over his own clan and family. Killing off his clansmen, including children was no easy task. Easy task? Jiraiya thought bitterly. While he didn't like the Uchihas all that much, he respected many of them. That was one of the reasons why Noon would suspect Itachi of being a double agent. Maybe he was getting too paranoid. But still. The lack of information regarding the other members or at least the leader's village of origin was irksome. He would need to contract Itachi again. Soon. I'll try to find out more about them in the following months. Jiraiya promised. And he would deliver it. This wasn't just to protect Minato's only son. But it was for the safety of Kanoha and the entire world. There was a familiar sense of dread of who could be the leader of the Akatsuki. But for the world of it, Jiraiya couldn't put from where that feeling came from. Okay. By the way, who is going to test me? 
Naruto asked. This was one of the reasons why the old man wanted to have this picnic. At this, Jiraiya stood up smiling and pointing his thumb at himself. But before he could say anything, Saratobi interrupted him. That would be me. You, old man? You're joking, right? Naruto asked surprised. And judging from Jiraiya's and Kosuka's expression, they didn't expect this either. Yeah, what's the deal, sensei? I thought I would be the one to do it. Jiraiya questioned. I don't remember saying that. Besides, this is a nice opportunity to test this new generation myself. It is up to Naruto and his peers to carry on the will of fire one day after all. Said the smiling Hiruzen. Very well then. Naruto conceded. Hiruzen nodded and took off his Hokage's robes, revealing his battle armor. I thought this was a simple test, not a battle to defend the village, old man. You can never be sure when the war will erupt, or when the village will be endangered. It is the duty of the Hokage to always be prepared. Saratobi said. Indeed. Replied Naruto, unsealing some of his shinobi gear from one of his scrolls in the meantime. One katana and pair of fingerless, chakra-channeling gloves. With them, his hits would be more damaging if he managed to land them. Saratobi in turn summoned his personal summon. Monkey King, Enma. A summon? Isn't that an overkill for a simple test? Naruto asked. You don't want me to summon Gamabunta, do you? Ha, huh, Hiruzen exclaimed. Feel free to do so, although, I don't know if the Chief of Toads would appreciate it. You got me there. In the distance, Jiraiya and Kosuka stood looking at the clearing where Naruto and Sarutobi stood opposite of each other. He could summon some other toad, if not Gamabunta. He doesn't want to hold back at all it seems. And from the looks of it, the old man doesn't want to either. Kosuka nodded. It looks like they will start with the simple weapon spar. It has been a long time since Hiruzen summoned Enma. Is it not? Indeed. Last time it was when Orochimaru fled the village. Jiraiya said, his mood turning sour at the memory of his rouge teammate, but he quickly pushed thought aside. This was not the moment to sulk and brood. Not everyone gets an opportunity to be tested by the current god of shinobi. How do you think Naruto will fare with sensei in weapons combat, Kosuka? Hard to tell, if I'm being honest with you, Jiraiyakun. Kosuka began seriously. I know Narutokun is very proficient in kenjutsu. But it all depends if Hiruzen is holding back or if he ever stopped practicing with his bua staff. In any case, we'll see for ourselves now. I can't remember when was the last time I saw Sensei in combat. This will be great to watch. I just hope he goes easy on the kid in ninjutsu. Ho ho. Kosuka laughed. You underestimate Narutokun there. You don't have much faith in our students? Do you, Jiraiyakun? Oh, I have enough faith in him, all right. Jiraiya smirked. Still. I shudder when I remember how Sensei used to test my team when I was younger. We'll find out soon if Hiruzen has lost his touch or not. In the meantime at the clearing separated from each other by twenty meters. Naruto and Sarutobi stared at each other. Hiruzen already had Enma transformed into his adamantine staff form, while Naruto stood in his place, katana in his right hand, resting its steel on his left, positioned just above his face. Since this is but a simple test, we are going by different fields, right? Not a full-out fight? In which I would probably be crumpled over. Old man didn't get his position for nepotism or anything else. He deserved his position and has proven to be a great leader and a shinobi. His reputation was probably one of the reasons why Kanoha survived for so long after the Nine Tails attack and in turn not being attacked by the other villages. Hyuga affair being the only exception due to the rakage screed. Indeed. I want to test every field you studied. 
you'll soon find why I'm called the professor in addition to the god of shinobi, my boy. Hiruzen said. Bring it on, old man, just don't break a hip or spine. Naruto taunted, smirking in the process. Picking on the elderly, huh? Sarutobi replied. Let's show him why our generation shouldn't be underestimated, Enma. If only you were this enthusiastic when you cornered Orochimaru. Enma thought. No point in sulking now. I want to see how much did Minato's boy grew up. Lead on, then. For a moment they were silent and unmoving, that is until Sarutobi decided to go first. The elderly take precedence as they say. He attacked Naruto with his adamantine staff, causing the Senju to take a completely defensive position. He really doesn't hold back. Slamming his staff towards Naruto's head, for a moment Sarutobi was afraid that he went too far. That is, until Naruto's sword appeared above his head, blocking the staff. Naruto held the hilt of his sword in his right hand, while his left one was pushing the edge of the steel by the end, upwards, giving him the balance needed to block the attack. Seeing this, Sarutobi slid his staff down, crouched, and went to attack Naruto's legs. Fortunately for Naruto, he saw this and jumped, evading the attack. You are good at blocking the attacks, Naruto-kun. But let me see some of your own skills. It has been a long time since I saw Toborama Sensei's Kenjutsu style and I know you are proficient in it. Naruto grunted and went for an assault. Just like he was adept at defense with a sword, so was the old man with his staff. Attack went for a minute or so until Sandame smiled and went for his own attack. He is good. Dare I say, in a few years he will be without a competition. All he needs is experience and height. Hiruzen thought amused. In the end, Sarutobi managed to kick the sword out of Naruto's hand, positioning his bua staff under his chin. Naruto smiled. I see now why they call you the professor. And I can see why Kosuka and Jiraiya say you are a prodigy with no match in your generation. Sarutobi complimented. Let us go with ninjutsu, genjutsu, and taijutsu at the same time for the next test. I want to see you go all out on me. With pleasure. Grinned Naruto. And so they began. First with Taijutsu, where even with his amazing speed, Sarutobi was able to counter Naruto's hits. But at the same time, he found it hard to land stronger strikes on him. Maybe we should include resistance seals into the academy's curriculum from now on. Don't you think? Naruto asked. Indeed we should. That is if children don't quit the academy after the first week with such training. First with ninjutsu. Naruto thought as he went through the few hand seals and exclaimed. Wind style, drilling air bullet. Inhaling the air into his stomach then pounding it and sending the. Cannon-like air towards Hiruzen who evaded it. It was followed by the three additional attacks which Hiruzen managed to evade as well. Attacks themselves ended up hitting the small rock hill behind the sandame causing the small crack holes to appear in it. Hiruzen didn't waste his time waiting for Naruto to attack again. So he went through his own hand seals, exhaling, fire style, fire dragon flame bullet. His dragon made of fire flew quickly towards Naruto and for a moment, Sarutobi was again afraid that he went too far. That is, until he saw the defensive barrier of water surrounding Naruto. Just like Toborama Sensei. Hiruzen thought nostalgically. Naruto made one shadow clone after the fire attack while Hiruzen went for another taijutsu attack until darkness started surrounding him. Sensei's infinite darkness genjutsu, one, genjutsu, bringer off darkness technique, Naruto's clone muttered as he made a tiger seal. Naruto himself went for an attack himself while the clone stood at his place. It was much easier to hit the old man now as he couldn't see anything. The infinite darkness was hard even for the Uchihas to escape from. But there was a slight downside of the jutsu. Enemy, if trained well enough, could sense the attacks coming at him. As the Sandame did just now. 
He managed to land few minor hits enhanced with his chakra on Naruto, but the darkness still remained. So he left a clone in charge of maintaining the darkness, while he himself went for the attack. Hiruzen concluded. Smart move. He then charged and attacked the clone, dispelling him and the darkness around him. Guess you figured it out, how to break off from the illusion? Naruto asked. You have vast knowledge, my boy. But the knowledge itself is only a puddle without the experience to back it up. You will learn that in time. After that, they went to the spar for another fifteen minutes. Before long, the sandame placed his kunai under Naruto's neck, smiling and saying. I win. Naruto could help but grin. The spar was amazing and he conceded defeat. They sat near the fire once more after the fight. Hiruzen wanted to give his own reassessment of Naruto's skills. I must say that I'm not only impressed but also proud of you as well, Narutokun, Saratobi said. Naruto couldn't help but feel proud too. He was many times complimented, even grudgingly by some of his peers or some academy's teachers. But this was different. He supposed this was a feeling when a grandfather was proud of his grandson. It was just like when Kosuka complimented him for mastering his affinities, or when Jiraiya praised him for his advancement in Fuinjutsu. I will never get tired of it. Thank you, Hokajesima. Suddenly getting formal? No need to do that, my boy. This won't go to your record or anything, Sarutobi said. So what is your final grade, old man? This time it was Jiraiya who approached them with Kosuka beside him, who asked the question. Impatient to know what his sensei would say about his godson's skills. From what he saw from the hill with Kosuka, Naruto could easily advance to the rank of Tokabetsu Jonin. Granted, he didn't have the experience necessary. But still. If Itachi was in the ANBU at this time and Kakashi himself a Jonin in his own right, there weren't many obstacles for Naruto to advance easily and become one. I know what you all are thinking. Sarutobi began. You really are skilled Narutokun. But you will need experience if you want to advance quickly through the ranks. Your skills in Kenjutsu are easily near the Jonin level. And your mastery of the wind and water element is something I haven't seen in a long time. You've been spending much time in your library. And you don't hold back any punches, gramps. Your skill in Bojutsu would have left me with months-long bruises had I didn't have the nine tails to heal me. Naruto added, rubbing his arms and tights in the process. While the damage itself was not very dangerous and with the fox healing him would heal him completely in a day. There was no doubt about the old man's skills as the muscles were still sore. Well, thank you Naruto-kun, Hiruzen replied. And just like Minato and Toborama Sensei, I can see you are going to be a devil at speed. And with the bringer off darkness technique, I won't have to worry about your lack of skills in that regard. By the way. How many genjutsus do you know? Seven in total, Naruto said. The bringer off darkness is the strongest genjutsu I know. I have one more a rank and the other five are brank. Lower than that is borderline impossible for me to use, just like the clone jutsu. Genjutsus in general wasted little of chakra. That's why they were one of the favorite tools for the Uchiha and Kurama clan. And the favorite tool for women. Sarutobi nodded with a serious expression on his face. With the amount of chakra Naruto had it would be hard for him to use the low-ranked techniques as they required too little chakra. And while he could see that Naruto had very good chakra control, it was still impossible. How would Naruto develop had that incident at the playground never happened? Sarutobi shuddered at the thought. It could have been his biggest shame if he left Naruto to grow by himself, without an adult figure in his life. Thought that he initially considered doing that brought a great sense of shame to him. Even with all the hardships he endured, Naruto never went towards the path of darkness, becoming a good shinobi and an even better man in the process. 
That was something he wanted Kosuka to do when he assigned Naruto to his care and was glad his old friend accomplished his task without downsides. I must also thank you, Kosuka. You really did a great job in being Naruto-kun's caretaker. The eternal genin who was silent thought the conversation smiled and gave something of his famous humbleness. Thank you for your praise, Sandaima-sama. But I did nothing aside from giving few pointers here and there. All his skills are directly coming from his own hard work and family's legacy. The three other men cited. Kosuka was infamous for his humble attitude. As ages go by, you still remain the same, my old friend, Saratobi said with a smile. Sometimes I wish more people would have been that way. Memory of his prodigious student appeared before him, but just as fast it disappeared. You shouldn't beat yourself over that, Sensei, Jiraiya added. I certainly don't. Anyhow, let us not jump from the subject. Right. As I said, your mastery of your affinities is nothing but amazing. And your use of them during the battle is at its place. With all your skills at where they are, I would say you will quickly advance throughout the ranks. It should be within the year. After all, in agreement with our allies of Sunagakir and few other minor villages, Chunin exams will be held in Kanoha in about six months after you graduate. So we won't have to risk exposing your identity in a potentially hostile environment. Now, regarding your teammates. Sarutobi trailed off, lighting his pipe in the process. I'm placing you under Kakashi. He told me long ago he wanted to be your Jonin Sensei once you graduate, but as you're going to be the rookie of the year, I was going to place you under his jurisdiction in any case. Naruto nodded. He already knew Kakashi. He was a student of his father back in the day. While he usually showed a lazy attitude towards his surroundings, he was interested in teaching him. Helping him with Rasengan training. Particularly when Kosuka was away on one of his border inspection missions. Who are my other teammates? Naruto asked in the meantime. Hiruzen was silent for a moment before answering. Uchiha Sasuke is one of them. Naruto simply stared at Sandame, as did Jiraiya and Kosuka. Are you sure that's wise, Sensei? Jiraiya questioned. From what you told me he is unsociable as it can get, even for the Uchiha standards. And as Itachi is in the organization that is hunting Naruto, there is a chance they cross their paths. I had no other choice but to place him under Kakashi, Jiraiya. Sasukakan has the potential to awaken his Sharingan and Kakashi would have to teach him anyway. There is no one else. If he awakens it. Many Uchihas did not. Jiraiya retorted. But I guess it won't change your mind. Right, Sensei? It is also for another purpose. At this, the three men looked up towards him. Narutakun, I mean no offense but it is also for your temporary safety. While I know you are strong, it is because of your status. Being Kanoha's Jinchuriki, it is up to Kakashi to calm you with his Sharingan if you start losing control of the Nine Tails. Do you understand? Naruto nodded calmly. That will only last while you are Genin as I have no intention of having Kakashi babysit you all the time. Aside from getting the experience on these missions with your team. You will also need to learn how to cope. With the real life of Shinobi. I know you already drank every book about emotions that Toborama Sensei wrote, but the theory is different from action. Again, Naruto nodded in understanding. It is no problem. Although, I have never spoken to the fox, and quite frankly I have no intention of doing so. I was thinking of going with it like my mother and Maida-sama did. Maybe you could. But then again, the seal Minato designed was there in order to help you to control the fox's power if ever need be, Jiraiya added his two cents. Seal on your stomach helps expand your already large chakra reserves. And it will only continue growing. It might be prudent that you learn to control at least some of its powers. Especially to help you against the Akatsuki if they corner you. I'd rather not. 
But I see your point, uncle. Naruto conceded. And who is to be my other teammate? It has to be a Kunoichi, right? Correct, Saratobi said. I originally thought about placing Yamanaka Ino with you, but I do not break off traditional Inoshikacho trio. It has proven itself effective for centuries, and I hope it remains for the centuries to come. Shikamaru told me once he was going to be placed on the same team with her and Choji. He couldn't help but complain it would be troublesome to have a Sasuke's fangirl to nag him all the time. He snorted in the end. Typical Nara I guess, Hiruzen mused. My other option was the Hyuga heiress, Hinata. She had the second highest practical score after Ino. But there's a slight problem there. He trailed off. You mean the fact she's deadly afraid of me? Naruto blankly stated. While the rest of his classmates got used to his presence even with all the gossip that ran around the village, Hinata was still frightened of him. For reasons completely unknown to Naruto, but he could guess. I spoke with her father, Hayashi, and he confined me with some informations regarding her attitude towards you. It seems that the young Hinata was a witness to the incident at the playground, and quite frankly, it traumatized her of your presence. Does Hayashi blame me for her timid behavior then? Naruto asked with annoyance in his voice. It would be really troublesome if he got on the wrong foot with other clans, especially clan heads. No, that is a completely different manner of problem within the Hyuga clan itself, Hiruzen answered him. I decided to go with Haruno Sakura, the third strongest kunoichi of your class. Strongest is the generous word, old man, Naruto said. Sakura is a smart girl and her theoretical results are always at the top beside mine and Sasuke's, yes. But she is rather weak in the physical department. Indeed. Your homeroom teacher, Sadarukan told me of this strange phenomenon among the young post-war kunoichis. Many of them get starstruck by the most popular boy in their class. The one who usually comes from the great clan background. Strangely enough, your class had rather high scores from the boys, much better than the other classes and years. Sarutobi rubbed his chin as he said the last part. That is because of the Saturu Sensei, Naruto answered him now with a hint of laughter in his voice. Every one of my classmates, including Shikamaru, loved getting a pat on the head and friendly smile from her, whenever they would do something right or correct. At this Jiraiya raised his eyebrows and whistled. Oh, are you suggesting we should place a female kunoichis in charge of every future class from now on? I never took you for a pervert, Naruto. I'm not like you, pervy sage. Naruto deadpanned. But as you mentioned, maybe we should. I could even see Sasuke sometimes getting more relaxed when he got praise from Saturu Sensei. See. What did I tell you, old man? We should definitely go with that route, Jiraiya would have continued rambling about his perverted dreams, had Saratobi didn't smack him on the back of his head. We can talk about that some other time, Jiraiya. This is more important. Hiruzen scolded as Jiraiya pouted. As I was saying, the quality of the new Kunoichis has drastically decreased in the years after the Third Shinobi World War, Saratobi said. For that, I don't have many options of giving you this placement and I have to look to somehow balance out the rest of the teams. While you and Sasukakin are exceptional in both physical and theoretical departments, Sakurakin is only in theoretical. It should balance out the teams and prevent the wider circles of shinobi populace to be discontent with this decision. I understand, old man, Naruto affirmed. But is there something more with this? I figure you wouldn't simply tell me this in order for me to know about my team before everyone else. Indeed there is more to this, Narutakun, Hiruzen nodded. I personally selected this team as part of Kakashi's assignment, as well as your first long-term mission. I'm listening. Uchiha Sasuke is a flight risk. Sarutobi bluntly stated. He has no close connections to anyone in the village and I'm afraid he would try to leave the first chance he gets if he doesn't get enough training and feels we are somehow holding him back from his quest of killing Itachi, 
there is a high possibility he leaves the village. And I hope I don't have to tell you how much it would hurt the prestige of Kanoha if that happens. It deteriorated with the time when much of your clansmen died in the wars, culminating with Minato's death during the Kyubi's attack. But even still, we survived by some sort of miracle. He finished gravely. Naruto was silent for a moment, contemplating what the old man told him. While he wasn't a friend with Sasuke, or even a close acquaintance, he did respect him for what he went through. Despite the history of their families, Naruto would not blame Sasuke for the blood he carried in his veins and hoped that Sasuke would do the same. We are similar in more ways than not. And if the legends are true, we share a common ancestor. I accept this mission, Hokajesima, Naruto said formally. Sarutobi smiled, as did the other two men. But I'm not sure how am I supposed to help here exactly. You don't expect me to train him, right? No, of course not. Your task will be more as a temporary goal that Sasuke needs to surpass in his mind. I refrained from giving him a personal tutor because I wanted to give him space to mourn his family for a time and hopefully create new bonds with the village. Training him early would only make him more detached as he would not have anything in the village holding him to it. Sasuke needs to see that he can be both loyal shinobi of Kanoha and strong at the same time. That's where you come to the picture. In Sasuke's and in the eyes of most people, you are but a simple orphan, ignoring your other attributes. Do you understand what I need you to do, Naruto-kun? You want me to become an inspiration for Sasuke to remain loyal to the village. By presenting myself as a clanless orphan who is stronger than him, he can see that the village won't hold him back. Although, I don't think it is up to me or Kakashi to make him loyal to the village, but up to himself. If he leaves then it won't be anyone's fault but his. I do know that, Naruto-kun. And for that reason, this won't go to your file as an official mission. Sarutobi told him a bit too gladly. Naruto nodded in appreciation anyway. However. But because of that, you won't be getting paid either. It's only fair to do so, isn't it? I guess, Naruto muttered. Figures he would do that. I only hope Sakura becomes serious with her training, although from what I see, I might need to jump in there and make her serious. It was true. He might need to do it. However, how to actually do it was a question to be answered for another time. Kosuka on the other hand, had an answer right away. Try not to create a wrong reputation of yourself while doing so, Sarutobi said to him with a laugh, as they continued eating the remaining meat. As they ate, Kosuka decided to give him his own advice or two. You must not become too proud, greedy, and angry when you deal with this mission once you graduate, Narutakun, his surrogate uncle told him seriously. It is true that you may face hardships when making your teammates go with your flow. But remember that patience is one of Shinobi's greatest virtues. Becoming too proud of your abilities, discarding your comrades will only be your undoing. Never forget that. Kosuka sad a bit mournfully for the entire atmosphere around them. His words were true in any case. For Kosuka had to learn that lesson the hard way. Becoming too proud of his abilities and being sure he would be promoted to Chunin combined with the greed of a young mind coming from a non-clan background, wanting to prove himself equal to the clan-born shinobis, in the end, caused his comrades to die because of it. And that resulted in anger at himself for his pride and greed compelling him to go almost suicidal for the sake of his other comrades of Kanoha. I'm not saying you shouldn't be proud of yourself and your accomplishments. But don't let it go over your head. Kosuka finished. Tobarama was known as a proud man and it never held him back. More so, it made him an even greater shinobi. Pride and greed were in combination worse for a ninja to have, than an ocean of emotions. I understand, uncle. I will do as you say. Kanahagakur no Sato, the academy, April 1st 9am Naruto sat on his usual seat in the classroom as the room filled in with potential future genins. Uncle Jiraiya left the village last week, 
promising he would commission a new battle armor for him, in the land of iron. Naruto hoped it would be ready for the next chunin exams. Old man said they would be held in Konoha six to seven months after he graduated. For now, Naruto was wearing a simple mesh gray shirt with bandages on his arms and black fingerless gloves that could channel chakra and strengthen his hits. And on top of it, black Hayori with white rope around his waist. The rest of his clothes consisted of dark blue flexible standard shinobi pants with bandages wrapped around his ankles and traditional shinobi sandals. On his forehead, he wore Kanoha's forehead protector with a long black cloth tied around his head, too. A nice contrast to his sun-kissed blonde hair. Satoru Sensei said he looked handsome wearing it. Naruto would miss Satoru Sensei a lot. She never looked at him with contempt, even though she was slightly tense around him when everyone found out he killed three boys who bullied him. Old man probably explained everything to her as she was assigned to his class and there was never any problem with her. As he waited for the team assignment, the classroom began to be filled with other genin hope tobe. His future teammate, Sakura was engaged in constructive debate with Ino on the subject, who does Sasukakan like more? She will be handy. Not soon after, Satoru Sensei arrived and gave her speech on how they are no longer simple academy students, but full-fledged ninjas of Konoha needing to take their duty towards their comrades and village seriously. Right, then let us begin with the team placements, Sensei announced as she began listing new teams and their team senseis, but Naruto already knew his. Two hours later, they waited for their Jonin instructor to show up. The rest of the new genins had already left with their respective senseis, only Team 7 remaining in the classroom. Where the hell is our sensei? Sakura complained. He has a tendency of being a few hours late for most of his appointments, Naruto answered her in a slightly distant tone. Huh? What kind of ninja is he, if he is so sloppy? Unironically, one of the best that the village has to offer. He bluntly told her. Sakura looked skeptical, Sasuke even more than her, though both said nothing to that. Being the person who knew why Kakashi was. Late propelled Naruto to tell them, at least bits and pieces. I know him from before and he really is a great shinobi, so you don't need to worry about him being lame or anything. He has his own way of coping with the life he has and loses he has suffered. He finished with a sad look. His parents were among those Kakashi lost. Kakashi knew them better than Naruto ever would and might even suffer more from their loss than he did. Because even if they were his parents, Naruto never knew them, Kakashi however did. That still doesn't excuse him for making us wait this long, the Uchiha's Avenger said this time, uttering those words with a slight annoyance while turning his attention back towards a single dot on the wall in front of him, his hands folded in front of his mouth. Naruto shrugged it off. No point in arguing there. Kakashi would hopefully change his ways. Hopefully. The man was very keen on teaching Naruto a few times he shadowed him over. At best, he would do the same with Sasuke and Sakura. As they waited, the three genins indulged themselves with their own favorite free time activities. Sasuke brooded, Sakura gushed over him and Naruto meditated. His chakra control constantly needed to be improved and kept in place. Meditation was a rather good way to help him do it. All three of them were quiet in their own way, until surprisingly Sasuke broke the silence with a question directed towards Naruto. How are you so strong? He asked without looking at him, simply staring at one dot at the wall as he did for the past hour. Sakura stopped daydreaming about Sasuke and looked towards Naruto with an unsure expression. Question was probably directed at him, she deduced. Naruto opened his eyes but remained silent. Many reasons. Was his answer. He did not know how to answer. Many reasons? Yes. Naruto's blunt response forced Sasuke to turn around with an angry look. You're obviously much better than me, or anyone else in this class and even the entire academy. Yet, you only come from a civilian background. I want to know. How? 
You know the shadow clone technique, yet you can't do a simple clone the rest of us are taught. How is that possible? He hated to admit that, but for a long time, he has come to the realization that Naruto was far ahead of him. He needed to know why. Naruto briefly considered what type of answer he should give to Sasuke. He didn't need to make an excuse, but for the time being his identity was supposed to be a secret. The fact he was with the last Uchiha in the same team was both ironic and dangerous. The last loyal Senju and the last loyal Uchiha. It really was ironic. Their two clans spent most of the Warring States era killing each other, creating this village in order to stop the endless circle of conflict and destruction of their families. Yet now, only two of them remained. And on the same team as well. A recipe for disaster. Depending on how the assignment Hokage gave him goes on Naruto and Sasuke could lead to a new age of prosperity of both of their clans. Or they could lead the both of them on a path of destruction. While not as prejudiced as his ancestor, Tobarama Senju, Naruto did hold the slight wariness of the clan. Of the so-called curse of hatred. Flashback the ten-year-old Naruto sat in the secret room of his clan and read a book about the Uchiha clan and particularly, their Sharingan. While his great-grandfather disliked Uchihas for their clan's enmity, he could give a credit to their strength where it's due. Even grudgingly. His ancestor, however, hated the Sharingan, its background, the way it was needed to awaken it. The way Sharingan was awoken and his further manifestation was total opposite to everything Senju stood for. He read the following part of their ability section, a clan haunted by evil and no clan feels the love deeper than the Uchiha clan does. For that reason, they feel a need to suppress it. Once an Uchiha knows about love, all his previous senses are forgotten. One could say that love Uchiha's bear, would go along the line with the love Senju's feel. But Uchiha's love is unbalanced. The greater the love they feel, the greater the possibility of it going out of control. When a person close to you dies, you feel a need to mourn. Some for a longer time, some for a shorter. You feel a need to prevent that from happening again if a person died violently. For Uchiha's result of that unbalanced love comes to fruition when that someone close to them dies. When they feel great agony over the loss of someone close, or just deep disappointment in themselves, chakra in their brain gets released, in turn, reacting to the optic nerves and changes the appearance in the person's eyes. A phenomenon called Sharingan. Eyes that reflect the heart. 3. End of the flashback the old man said that Sasuke never showed any indications that he had awoken his Sharingan. He probably didn't, but for all intents and purposes, he should have. There are some things you don't know about me, Sasuke. And it will remain like that for the time being. That is all I will say to you. He finally answered him. Sasuke was silent, but in the end, he accepted his answer and went back to his staring while Naruto went to his meditation, closing his eyes as he did. The atmosphere however remained a bit tense. Sakura, curious as she was, decided to ask Naruto a question that bugged her for a long time. Um, Naruto? May I ask you something, personal? At Naruto's raised eyebrow, Sakura proceeded to ask. Is it true that you killed those three academy students and why did you? The question ended quickly, as it seemed Sakura wanted it out of her mouth. Yes. Was the only answer that came from Naruto. Sakura blinked, while Sasuke snorted so uncharacteristically for him. What a way to bond. Naruto inwardly mused. Do you guys know something about the Genin test? My parents told me it exists after we graduate. For, Sakura asked. Again. It's true. The key of the test is to see if we have teamwork and to see if we are eligible to actually become full-fledged shinobis of Kanoha. Naruto told her, trying to lift the tense mood. So only teamwork? But that sounds too easy. There has to be something more. It is only that. 
Any sort of test will probably try to force a disunity among us and see if we actually possess the will of fire. Basically, if we prove we do, we pass. Naruto answered and smiled as he sensed their sensei standing by the door for the duration of this conversation. Soon after, Kakashi entered through the door and presented himself with one of his usual goofy eye smiles. Sorry I'm late. Got lost on the road of life. Naruto smirked, Sasuke glared and Sakura was ready to explode. Meet me at the roof in five minutes. Don't be late. And now it begins. Kanaha Gakura no Sato, the Hokage's Tower, Jonin Meeting Hall, 1 St. April, 8 AM The Sandame Hokage, Saratobi Hiruzen just finished announcing the placements for the new Genin teams. Sitting on his throne-like chair with the symbol of the Will of Fire standing tall behind him, he looked towards the 36 Jonins that would take over the same number of teams this year. 108 Academy students had passed their exams with only 12 failing this time around. They might quit or just take another year in the academy for the additional training. And from these 36 teams, some, once again, might return to the academy for another year. There are always such cases. In any case, he needed to make sure his jonins knew of their duties regarding the new generation. Some would take a team for the first time, while others would just have to be reminded of certain things. As you now know of your potential teams, I must also brief you with your main duties regarding their training. You can implement your own style into it if you want, but what you're going to read in those envelopes in front of you is a must-do, regardless of your own ways on the matter. His jonins, sitting on the floor in front of him, nodded in understanding, taking the envelopes in front of them and proceeding to read the contains. As some of them continued reading it, Sarutobi decided to give another one of his advice. As you all know, after the Uchiha clan's massacre, I, alongside with both the higher-ranked shinobi and the clan council, have decided to implement some changes to the academy's curriculum and the standard training of the shinobi forces that every active ninja of Kanoha must abide by. He continued retelling them the story, not for the first time. And they had listened just as they had obeyed his orders. Both his chunins and jonins. Jonin senseis for the past three years, since this rule was passed, have upped the training of their students which resulted in better performance of the new genins. While the title of chunin actually meant more than a simple promotion from being a simple non-genin. Ninja wearing a fancy uniform. Now, the academy students had to know more advanced chakra control exercises of tree and water walking, at the very least. It would save time during their genin training. Among other things. Sarutobi thought. Sarutobi loathed that the Uchiha clan's massacre had a role in his wake-up call. But as they had lost a significant portion of their forces there, and given the reports from Jiraiya that Orochimaru was presumably building his own village. It was a necessity. Kanahagakur had always prided itself in being in favor of quality over quantity in contrast to the Iwagakure's quantity and Kyumo to an extent who favored the mix of both, resulting in the hybrid composition of the armed forces, depending on the time and the rakage himself. They had faced some defection from a small number of ninjas, who abandoned the village in pursuit of their own selfish ambitions, for many years. And Hiruzen was adamant to lower that number as much as he could before his successor one day could take the mantle of the fifth Hokage. He had someone in mind, but for the sake of both his heir presumptive and the village, Hiruzen would warm this seat for a few more years if the heavens were kind on him. Ignoring Orochimaru, cases like Mizuki or Rokusho Aoi were threatening to the development of the future generations. He used the veteran shinobis and those who had decided to retire previously to form a special unit of the ANBUs for cracking down the potential spies and traitors. It was a risky move, for one could never be sure where a traitor would make his nest. And he was getting paranoid as the time went on. But he needed to. Too many incidents happened for the past thirteen years for him to simply be laid back. Even so, the rooster for the academy's staff had to be under constant surveillance. Mizuki and Aoi were the instructors at the academy, after all. 
Jennings now had to perform at least a minimum of the training regime required, one that he devised, during each day of the training. 1. The starting date of their first mission was also arranged. It was a tradition for the Hokage to wish the new youth a bit of good luck, after all. And it would ease his schedule in the office a bit. Jennings, for the higher-ranked missions, had to perform various types of lower-ranked missions first, before they could be even signet in for the Chunin selection exams by their respective senseis or be promoted on the field if they were ready for it. In any case, they had to have the experience of understanding how border patrolling works. Something he had to arrange with the Kunoichi village of Nadashiko from the land of T. It wouldn't do well for Kanoha to get another one of their traditional international incidents or disputes on the table. Wars have been started for less. So the Kunoichis from Nadashiko would know that Kanoha means to have no military drills on their borders. And in turn, they would not try to snatch some of their young virgin. Genins or their senseis for their seed. He couldn't forbid them to interact during those encounters on the other hand. As Sarutobi mused about it in his mind, a longing wish to be young again filled his body for a brief moment. He mentally shook his head to forget about it. Jennings would also need to know how escort missions are performed, delivery, interrogation, tracking, and so on. All those things they would have to learn the experience on the field would help them advance further. And help them stay alive. Quality over quantity. Turning his attention back to his jonins, he addressed them once more. Bear in mind that I will have someone report to me the progress of your students, so it would be in your best interest that you do not slack with their training and further education. Or even your own, for that matter. He warned them. We have been dealt with many heavy blows for the past decade and more. I don't want the village and its future to suffer because of it, or because of slothfulness of our own. It is up to us to leave a better world for the younger generations, and it is up to them to look at us as their role models. When you take them under your wings, you are not only making sure that the name of our village rises further, but also of your own families and yourself. His jonins nodded, with one of them raising their hands, wanting to ask the Hokage something. Iroh Haken, Sarutobi said, granting the jonin opportunity to speak. Hokagesima. The Hyuga jonin in question bowed slightly, proceeding to ask his question. Is there any particular reason why there was a so imbalanced team placement this year? I'm referring to the Team 7, under Jonin Sensei, Hataki Kakashi. Kakashi for his part, turned his attention from his orange book and looked towards his Hokage, while the other Jonin's Inram started whispering among each other. All of them wondering the same. That is classified information, though I have no doubt that many of you understand the reasons for such action, Hiruzen replied. However, you should know that I was the one who arranged the Team 7's membership for this year. And that it will not be changed. The Hokage answered. Shiranui Ginma raised his hand this time, exclaiming his own curiosity after getting permission from the Hokage to speak. Considering the new arrangements for the Genin training, Hokagesima, are the teamwork tests to remain the same, or are we supposed to upgrade the difficulty? The Sandame shook his head in negative. The tests, as you see them fit, are better if they remain the same. We have probably lost some good potential in the past because we sought to focus on the teamwork from our Genenstobe, without introducing them to the importance of the concept itself, while they were in the academy. For that, we have placed a bigger focus on that subject before their graduation. In the past, they wanted selectively to pass their students. Only those who figured out the meaning of their tests would pass. Now on the other hand, by imparting into the young minds both the necessity and the positive sides of teamwork, they would pass with a better performance than they would have some three years ago or before. Previously, those who passed their John and Sensei's tests on the second time were the prime material for becoming the Miss Singnans. Bitterness, anger, and shame all played their parts in corrupting their psyche. By ensuring they were familiar with the concept of teamwork early on, new shinobis would figure out the meaning of the test right away. For the most part. Working together, they would pass. And when they pass, 
they would always remember that it was the teamwork who got where they were. There was a low-key chance for them to turn rogue. With this new module, they got better shinobis in training and more shinobis in numbers, in turn. If that is all, I believe you have your future students to meet soon. I wish you all the best of luck. May the will of fire brighten your way and your future. The Sandame finished with a smile, getting the chorus of, yes, Hoka Jessima, as he did. With Kakashi Hataki Kakashi walked towards his destination, the Kanoha Shinobi Academy. After Sandame's briefing and spending two hours at the memorial stone in memory of his deceased teammates, he decided that it was a time to go. As he walked at a slow pace, he didn't even pick up his book to read. Contemplating on how he would train his team. He had no doubts they would pass. With Naruto on the team, it was expected. But. His team also consisted of a self-centered Avenger and an Avenger's fangirl. The orders from the Hokage were clear though. He was to be Sasuke's watcher and in turn, he had to make sure that the last loyal Uchiha stayed loyal to the village. The Sandame told him that Naruto also knew of his missions, so he would get some help there. If he was honest with himself, Kakashi didn't know what to do with Sasuke. With Naruto, all he had to prepare his mental state for the more advanced missions once he was promoted. It'll be fast. Minato Sensei's son was a prodigy, in a similar fashion to him and Itachi. Kakashi didn't know why he compared the sensei's son to one of Kanoha's most infamous traitors. He knew Naruto for some time, and despite what he went through, he would remain loyal to the village. It was the only home he had and the only home he knew. In addition to that, he had few bonds within the village. The chance of him fleeing was slim if non-existent. But he had to be on alarm for his mental state now. Kosuka did a good job in any case. And with the inclusion of Jiraiya, all the initial suspicions flew away like wind. It was the total opposite to his other teammate. Sasuke. Sasuke is the problem. It was no secret to the shinobi population that the Uchiha clan as a whole liked keeping it to themselves regarding anything. Few exceptions existed, of course but even they were in a minority in the entire clan. A curse of hatred. Minato Sensei once mentioned. Regarding his teammate Abito as an exception to such a curse and a complete opposite to the general conduct of the said clan. Abito was a towering example of the will of fire in Kakashi's opinion. His unfortunate death established his esteem within Hataki's mind. Kakashi sighed as he stood in front of the door to the classroom his future team was currently in. Hearing Sakura questioning her teammates about the Genin test, he didn't fight back the smile that was prowling onto his face. I'll do this the right way. Abito, Rin, Minato Sensei. He decided that they waited enough. Opening the door, he walked inside, presenting himself with his usual goofy eye smile and lame excuse he always had. Sorry I'm late. Got lost on the road of life. He could see Sasuke glaring in such a prickly way. Well, at least he can control himself. Kakashi thought. He could see Sakura being ready to explode. She'll be handy. And Naruto simply smirked. He knew about his coping mechanism at least. He would need to find another. Perhaps it was even the time to let go of the past and resentment of it. He needed to live by Abito's legacy, not drown in its memory. Meet me at the roof in five minutes. Don't be late. He told them as he disappeared in a swirl of leaves. I'll do this the right way from now on. Three of them are the future. In the capital city of the Land of Iron, with Jiraiya Dam. I always forget how cold this land really is. The Toad Sage, Jiraiya of the Sanmin thought as he walked over the snowy streets of the Samurai homeland's capital city. His footprints were getting covered by the falling snow as he walked further and further through the town. Being deep in the mountains of the Land of Iron it was expected. Still. It didn't mean that Jiraiya had to like it. 
but, Naruto was rather adamant about getting a new armor for the Chunin exams. For all his talk about setting his emotions aside. Naruto has asked him to commission an armor set for his match and future missions. And from the land of iron of all places. Maybe it was a mistake to tell him about the quality of metal from this country. Jiraiya thought. Bah. Even if I didn't, the kid would figure it out somehow. Name of the country aside. But the fire wasn't very common in the land of fire, affinity of their ninjas aside. Only when some sort of catastrophe happens. He wouldn't think that the iron in the land of iron was the best. Would he? As he walked through the snowy streets, Jiraiya had noticed that many people were uneasy as they were running amok. It was a Friday and the streets were busy with people going around on their way, scrambling around the food stores in order to acquire the goods that were usually unavailable. However, there were much more samurais and many more civilians than before, as Jiraiya recalled his past visits to this place. The capital city wasn't that populous in the past. A breach in the security? Most likely. Perhaps his old acquaintance would know something. Samurais didn't wage a war with neighboring countries in a long time. They must have experienced a population boom, he thought with a lecherous grin on his face. Not soon after, he reached his destination. The best armorsmith in the continent. Sadamun. Jiraiya walked inside the shop. A rather exuberant place. Well, he was always the type of guy to show off his fame and skills. It was a large building built in traditional architecture, like every other building in this country, with wooden dolls standing on the outside with a pair of different armors on them, signifying it was an armory, if a sign above the door was missed by a passenger by any chance. A bell ringed as he entered through the door, but no one came from behind the shop. Maybe he took a break? Jiraiya proceeded to look around the shop. Various types of battle gear were hanging around the room. Both of the armor and regular weaponry. It took you long enough to come out, Jiraiya said smirking as he turned around and faced an old man in his late fifties, of mid-height, bald of head and long black beard with a few shades of gray here and there and a pair of glasses on his eyes. It's not like anyone would dare to steal from here, not even ninjas. Even your kind has some sense of honor when it comes to business. The old man replied in a harsh tone, but his face immediately cracked a smile. It's good to see you, Jiraiya. How long has it been? Fifteen years? More? Thirteen. It was just after the third war, Jiraiya corrected, still smiling. It is good to see you old friend. He approached Sadamun and they shook hands. It's good to see you too, Jiraiya. But tell me you're not commissioning something for any of your ninja wars. I don't want to have problems with Mifunodono. Despite his calm demeanor, he gets prickly if I were to start dealing with you people during your fights. It's nothing of sort, Sadamun, Jiraiya said. I want to order an armor set for a boy of 30 into 17 age group. To last for a few years before he decides to buy a new one. He moved his hand to his pocket and pulled out a sheet of paper and handed it to the blacksmith. The sheet of paper contained the current measures of the armor set as well as the Senju clan insignia on its chest that Naruto wanted to be present. Hopefully, Sadamun would not recognize it. Taking the paper in his hands, the blacksmith nodded but then widened his eyes suddenly. Or would. You have some explainings to do Jiraiya. The blacksmith said with furrowed eyebrows as he pointed a crest on a paper. The toad sage cited. I can't say much for now. You'll hear the news in a few months anyway. Looking towards the old blacksmith and his skeptical face Jiraiya sighed once more. Fine. How much? It'll be 600,000 Rio, Sadamun said. 600,000. Jiraiya shouted. What the hell? Since when did you get this expensive? And just to keep a secret. Ever since I'm dealing with shinobis. Don't worry I won't say a word about your Senju boy to anyone. 
but, do you know about the bureaucracy I'll have to deal with in order to get you this set? All the material I need to buy first. Satamun retorted. I assume your Senja boy wants it to be chakra enduring, right? It would be nice if you could arrange it, Jiraiya said with an automatic smile, but then turned serious. It won't cost more, right? No worries, Jiraiya. It won't. The price is just for the armor and the materials I need to buy first. The blacksmith said. But it'll take much longer for me to have it ready than usual, with this crisis we have at the moment. He grumbled at the end. So there was something suspicious happening. I was about to ask you regarding that. What's the deal? I don't remember samurais being this uneasy, like ever. Jiraiya pointed out, crossing his arms. You guys don't go around waging wars on the neighboring countries. Is someone attacking you? There were more people than usual. So it wasn't a population boom. Maybe refugees from the battle-affected regions? Hardly, Satamune muttered as he moved behind his counter. From what I have heard, there's a number of young children missing from the villages at the border with the land of rice paddies. 2. Mifunodono has sent a missive to the rice daimyo, but all he has got is a denial of such accusations. It gets worse as the rice country now has the hidden village, Otogekure no Sato. He sneered at the mention of that name. So those were the refugees. A new war. The land can never get rest it seems. Jiraiya knew that while Satamun respected him and supplied him with the intelligence, during the Third Shinobi World War, he disliked the shinobis and what they stood for. While not a samurai himself, he had their sense of honor. And the two professions were so different from each other that it was a miracle how the blacksmith was friendly with him. Jiraiya guessed that saving another man from a group of rogue ninjas has never given a better result in the new friendship. A number of young children missing. Jiraiya muttered as he considered many options. There is only one man that comes to mind. You know something about that? Satamune raised his eyebrow, as he typed the bill for the armor. Maybe, Jiraiya paused for a second as he closed his eyes. Before he fled Kanoha, my old teammate, Orochimaru was discovered experimenting on the young children, being responsible for their kidnapping. Doing all sorts of experiments on them. If there is someone to be the prime suspect, it's him. I should have known it was one of your own doing that. Satamune snorted bitterly. Anyway, here's your bill. Give it to the kid that wants the armor. A 600,000 Rios. Naruto will have to take something from his inheritance for this. Not that it would harm his income in any case. I can have your word you won't mention anything about this. Armor to anyone? He needed to be sure. Naruto's heritage would be revealed anyway in a few months, but it was better to make sure the kid was safe until he got more experience. As safe as the life of Shinobi could be. I'm not a woman, Jiraiya, nor do I have a benefit of being in their company as much as you do. But tell me this, who is the kid? Your old student's son. Satamune peeked from the side. Not telling. Jiraiya snorted as he started walking out of the shop. Jiraiya. Satamun called him once more before he left. Please go and see Mifunodono regarding this. It'll mean much to us. He nodded. If Orochimaru really was behind all this, then it would be wise to ally with Samurai to stop him. By the way. How long will it take you to finish that armor? A new schedule was needed to arrange his traveling plans. Many things would need to be checked. Money to be picked and messages to be delivered. Come back in about a month. It should be ready by then. A month to finish all this. I should get to a nearby onsen before I leave. Jiraiya thought mischievously. Some pleasure for his soul won't harm anyone after all and it would be good to get a little warm from all this cold. Well then, see you around old friend. Kanahagakur no Sato, 
April 9th a week has passed since they became Genins and today would be the first day when they would take their first mission. Ever since the day they passed their test, before starting the training, Kakusha Sensei had them do the new training regime for Genins that was required, 200 laps around the training field, 100 push-ups, the same number of sit-ups and back stretchers. And that was only for warm-up. It wasn't a problem for Naruto to do them and neither was for Sasuke. Sakura, however, got tired quickly. She would have to go step by step in order to reach the required hundred without much fatigue. Today was also the day when they would have their first mission. For the duration of the first week, they were doing mostly team-building exercises with an occasional spar between the members of the team. But now, Kakusha Sensei has deemed them ready for them. While a bit disgruntled for the lack of a more practical side of training, Naruto understood the necessity of the training their sensei had put them up to. All three genins had different worldviews and values. While they passed their bell test it was due to Naruto who knew the true meaning behind it. Journals are certainly one way to gather the necessary information that would help you later on. And pieces of information are sometimes life saviors on the battlefield. Sakura still had her fangirl moments. But she had the potential to be broken off from that persona. Their missions would no doubt be a great wake-up call for her to take things more seriously. Albeit, she already did, if only for the sake of Sasuke noticing her. Because as Naruto told her, she needed to ditch her diet and eat more in order to get the Uchiha's attention. A bit of manipulation. As he had ignored her while she was skinny. If she got more weight he might start giving her actual attention. Although it required to have a bit of persuasion from Sasuke's side. For now, he should ignore her if she would pester him with anything other than ninja training. What do you think our first mission will be? Sakura asked her teammates as they walked towards the academy where they would receive their first mission. Something within the village most likely. Naruto said. Sensei? Sakura directed her question towards Kakashi. Naruto is correct. Most of your initial missions will be within the village. He told her. Only later on when I deem you experienced enough for the higher ranked missions, I can talk with the Hokajesima and ask him to allow it. Which will most likely happen soon. Kakashi thought with a hint of pride. Despite their differences, the three of them showed great teamwork during their training. Even if for the sake of just finishing the task early. Sasuke was a bit distanced from his teammates, but Sakura and Naruto at least had a cordial relationship. He noticed during the first three days of their team's existence, Sakura would occasionally be tense around Naruto, but fortunately, she broke from that shell fast as she got to know him better. Team 7 reporting for our first mission, Hokajesima, Kakashi said as he and his team entered the mission assignment room, bowing slightly to the Sandam Hokage who sat behind the desk with various papers on it. Mission requests most likely. Ah, it's good that you came. We have many drank missions for today. Some teams already came and picked them up already. Sarutobi said as he skimmed throughout the paper with the list of missions for rookies. Here we are. We have, 1. Finding a missing cat. 2 cleaning the garden. 3. Babysitting three children of the merchant from the capital that is visiting the village. We'll take the finding a missing cat mission, Hokajesima. Kakashi interrupted seeing his genins getting a little impatient. Sasuke and Naruto at least did. Sakura had a confused expression on her face. Very well. Here is the picture of a cat. Sarutobi handed the photo to the Kakashi. And here is the list of locations where he could be at the moment. Thank you, Hokajesima. Team 7, let's go. Finding a missing cat? Sasuke sneered once they exited the building. Exactly, Sasuke, Kakashi said flatly. Consider this as a training for tracking mission that you might encounter in your career. HN. He turned his head to the other side as he gave his unhappy grunt. Shouldn't a Team 8 be better suited for this type of mission? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. 
They are a tracking team officially, after all. Maybe, but I want you to get experience in different fields before we embark on higher-ranked missions, Kakashi said nonchalantly. At Naruto's continued skepticism, he simply shrugged his shoulders and picked up his orange book from his hostler and began reading it. Here's the picture of a cat you're supposed to find and here are the parameters on where he could be. He handed them the photo and map as he continued reading. Good luck. What are you going to do while we search? Sakura asked. I'll oversee you and the result of your team building exercises, Kakashi said as he flipped another page of his book, not even lifting his head as he answered. We should check the closest location first, Sakura said, shooting her sensei a disgruntled look. Right. It's the old Senju compound. Sasuke said, accepting the current situation as it was. Fuck. How could I forget that? Naruto didn't want Sakura and Sasuke to go there now. Curiosity killed the cat. After all. Wait. I'll try to sense him and pinpoint his location. He suggested instead. How can you sense it if you don't even know its signature? Sakura questioned. It was true. However, he answered his theory nonetheless. All I need is to sense the male animal, in this case, a cat, that's away from the humans within the village. We can begin the search that way. As the cat escaped, he should be away from the crowds. Or at least somewhere he would not be disturbed or easily found. 3. Fine. How far is your range? Sasuke asked this time. I can go with 5 kilometers for now. The range will expand as I grow. It was already strong as it was, allowing Naruto to detect various chakra signatures in the village. With one male having traces of chakra similar to his own in a way. It was one of the ANBUs that acted as his guardian when Kosuka was away. He didn't mention that to anyone, yet. Or ask the person in question, anything. He figured that the old man must have known something about it, but kept it a secret for now. Sasuke looked at him strangely for a moment before nodding. Where should we start then? Naruto placed his finger on the ground and focused on his senses. After a minute or so he smiled and answered. Forest near the Nara clan's compound. A perfect place to hide and evade the intruders. A half hour later, I can't believe that she actually was there, Sakura said as they walked towards the academy once more. It wasn't hard to find the cat with a sensor on their team, but catching it was a lot harder. But still, they managed to grab him. The cat really likes you, Sasukakan. Sakura said, watching the said animal peacefully sleeping in the Uchiha's arms. Hn. Are we doing another mission today, Kakashi sensei Sakura asked again. Kakashi thought about it for a second. Maybe another one that requires teamwork? Sure, why not? They can work together on a mission, while he oversees them and read his book in the process. You're finished already? Sandame Hokage, Sarutobi Hiruzen asked lifting his head from a document he was previously reading. The power of teamwork, Hokajesima, Naruto said formally, but there was a small glint of laughter in his blue eyes. I see. Sarutobi nodded. Bring Ruzen in. One of the Hokage's assistants stood up and went to another room, calling the customer for the mission to come. A short woman, with short dark blue hair and a somewhat emotionless look, came inside, tugging the cat from Sasuke's arms, who scowled at such disrespect. Why have you ran away from me, Nat-chan? The woman asked as she started hugging her cat tightly and exiting the building after paying the successfully accomplished mission. What's up with her? Naruto asked while Kakashi went to ask for another mission. I know her from my neighborhood. I heard she had that cat ever since her husband left her after finding out she cheated on him with a merchant from the Land of Lighting. Sakura whispered to him. He dodged Kunai with that one, even if the wound would scar him forever. He gave no comment, only a curt nod. You want another mission for your team, Kakashi? 
They heard the Hokage ask their sensei. Yes, Hokagesima. Let's see. You have. The Sandame started listing available jobs. A week later, what do you think sensei will have us do today? Sakura asked her teammates as they waited for Kakashi to show up. More teamwork probably. Sasuke blurted out. Content that her crush acknowledged her Sakura continued with the flow. Do you think he'll start teaching us any techniques soon? Probably. Came the answer from Naruto who was leaning on a nearby tree. He actually talked to the old man about this phenomenon. Apparently, there is a new training regimen for all of the standard forces of Konoha. Team building is essential right now. Jutsus will come later. Where would you two like to specialize in? Naruto sat up straight from the tree he was leaning on, scratching his back from the crumbs of the tree that slipped through his clothes. I'd like to be an all-round shinobi, if that makes sense. Or where I can, that is. All except the medical ninjutsu. Same as Naruto, Sasuke muttered. What about you, Sakura? I don't know. She said. Satoru Sensei said I have good chakra control so I could go for genjutsu or medical ninjutsu. I'll probably go with one of those too. It won't hurt to try both, Naruto advised her. While the medical ninjutsu is useful, it will leave you lacking in the combat part. You could actually go with it and supplement it with genjutsu and taijutsu. Maybe even some of bukajutsu. Sakura seemed to think about it. I'll see with Kakusha Sensei and hear what he has to say. She nodded to herself. What do you think, Sasukakan? I agree with Naruto. Was the only reply from the Uchiha. Seeing as Kakashi was still absent, more so than usual, Naruto took out the advanced Fuenjutsu manual from his holster and began reading it. Fuenjutsu? Questioned Sakura. I didn't know you were interested in that. I'm still a beginner. But I'd like to be more proficient one day. If I ever want to learn the flying thunder god technique. Went. Unsaid. So how good are you with it? Naruto never actually considered this. While Jiraiya praised him as a prodigy in the art, he did say he was still far from a master. It wasn't that irritating. He didn't bother learning much of it before. But as he was a genin now, there weren't many other things he should give most of his focus on. He mastered his two affinities to the fullest. All that was needed was to expand his already large repertoire of jutsus. Hard to tell. I know how to create basic explosive tags and more advanced sealing scrolls, in addition to elemental traps and a few more that are useful in battle. I'd say I'm slightly better than the average shinobi. But as I haven't given much focus on Fuenjutsu until now, it's hard to tell. Sakura nodded and Kakashi arrived soon after that. Sorry I'm late, but I had a meeting with Hokajesima just beforehand. Cutting Sakura off as she was about to complain. Naruto raised his eyebrow in curiosity and Kakashi addressed him next. He also told me that he needs to talk to you later on, regarding some shipment, Naruto. Naruto nodded. Jiraiya must have returned with his armor, or at least the request for money to be deposited for this investment. Right then, aside from the meeting, I visited one of the shinobi gear shops and got some things that should help you in your further training, Kakashi said, gaining the full attention of his students, especially Sasuke who was ignoring him for the first part. How will you do that, sensei? Sakura asked. First. With this. Kakashi said and pulled out a small deck of papers, handing each of them one piece. Now watch. He channeled his chakra into the one he was holding, making it wrinkle. For, what does that mean? Curious Sakura asked while Naruto and Sasuke watched in silence. That means that the lighting is my primary affinity, Kakashi answered. Although, at the same time I am capable of using all other four elements as well. Due to the fact I trained those elements from scratch. But, as they are not my primary affinity, I can't use them that well. 
These papers can determine your elemental affinity, something that every person has. I see. Was the response from Sakura. Now it's your turn, Kakashi said with an easy eye smile. Simply channel your chakra to the paper and the rest will do itself. Sakura went first getting her paper crumble, indicating earth elemental affinity. Sasuke was second with his paper wrinkling showing he had a strong affinity for lighting, something that surprised both Kakashi and Naruto, who thought that Uchiha's were naturally inclined towards the fire. Congratulations, Sasuke, it seems you have a strong affinity for lighting. Though, judging by the strength of your fire techniques, I suspect that you have a strong and trained affinity for fire, too. Complimented Kakashi. Hn, Sasuke grunted contently. It would explain why he had a hard time mastering the grand fireball jutsu when he was a child. Something that irked him to no end. At the same time, he was happy that he found the answer to the question he never actually asked. Naruto took the last turn, with his paper being cleanly sliced in half in a rather violent way and at the same time got completely wet. Both indicated a strong affinity for wind and water, which Kakashi pointed out to the two remaining students who were left wondering from the minor show. Naruto's paper shows that he has a strong affinity for both wind and water at the same time. Now before you ask, this means that he was born with the affinity for both elements. Kakashi explained. Furthermore, this is also common among bloodline-based shinobis or clans from other nations. Naruto nodded. He already knew about that, but what he didn't know about was the exact bloodline he had. He had a book about bloodline mutations, but the book only explained how certain advanced nature manipulations turned into bloodlines initially. Other villages certainly do have shinobis with bloodline. Particularly Kirigakure. Naruto promised himself that one of these days he would try to combine his elements into a new one. If it was even possible to do so, that is. So does that mean that Naruto has a bloodline? Sakura asked. It can mean that, Sakura. Yes. But at the same time many shinobis are born with two different elements, yet never show any signs of a bloodline mutation. The Sandame Hokajesima is a prime example of this. He was born with the affinity for fire and earth, yet has never been able to create a lava release for example, but is able to use those elements in combination with each other, making him feared throughout the elemental nations and earning him a title of the professor, in addition to the god of shinobi. Kakashi finished his lecture. Naruto may have a bloodline, but he also may not. It is up to him to experiment and try and find out, if he wants that is. Once again, Naruto nodded. He would definitely do that. The Senja name was to resurface once again. While he wanted to do it with flying Raijin, it may not be possible to happen up to the Chunin exams. But. He could make a name for himself at a later date anyway. On the other hand, it would be beneficial for Kanoha to gain another bloodline. While they had a definite and certain bloodline in Hyuga's Byakugan and uncertain in Uchiha's Sharingan and Kurama clan's Ido Kekiai Genkai. It wouldn't hurt to have another one. Kanoha prided itself in a hereditary talent of various clans that dwelled inside of it, unlike the other villages who possessed the various bloodlines in their own right. Including some minor villages. As the old saying regarding the bloodlines went, Kirigakure has. Kanahagakure preserves. Sanagakure watches. Iwagakure explores. And Kumogakure takes. 5. Now. Kakashi Sensei woke him from his musings with his announcement. Sasuke, Naruto. You two will for the duration of my tutoring practice mostly with elemental manipulation. And ninjutsu, respectively. Sakura, while I'm proud of you for stepping up with your training. He said, making the pink-haired girl smile. You would do better with genjutsu or medical ninjutsu supplemented with taijutsu. With your current chakra reserves, it would suit you better as well as be more useful, as earth element takes a lot of chakra, which could leave you vulnerable to the attacks if the fight is prolonged. I understand, Kakashi Sensei. 
she said with confidence. Good. Now let's warm up a bit and start with the first steps of your individual training. Kakashi told them. Sakura and Sasuke at least needed to go with the first steps. He's yet to figure out what to do with Naruto. Maybe he could start learning a third element as he studies Fuinjutsu. He needed to step up with his own training too. Orochimaru was making moves lately. Possibly creating a new village of his own. That didn't bode well. The Sandame told that bit of information, that he got from Jiraiya, only to a selected group of Jonans, in order to give Orochimaru a sense of security. The snake Sanin would no doubt change whatever plans he had if the information that Kanoha knew about his movements was revealed. They're growing up. Kakashi thought as he looked at his students warming up. If he wanted to honor his deceased teammates, he should focus on developing his own team, if anything not to become like his own, dead. Somewhere in the land of rice paddies this is wrong. Walking throughout the greenery of his homeland, one Endo Genyumaru, six, wondered why many of his countrymen considered this as a good thing for their homeland. His clan elder deemed that serving the rogue Kanoha Sanin would be a good thing for the clan and the people of the country as a whole. But Genyumaru had his doubts. He wouldn't be a rogue shinobi if he was good. When Orochimaru came to their disgraced country, using their defeat in the war against the land of hot water, it was a too tempting opportunity to pass. Uniting the rather rival, but in between peaceful clans was no easy task for the individual shinobis of their country to do. But Orochimaru held good connections with many of them, using that as a tool to finally unite them. They passed an opportunity to create their own hidden village back when everyone else did. Maybe another chance would not come to pass. And to kick their pride, even more, a rouge leadership reject of Kanoha used them for the dishonorable task such as this one. Don't slack off. Was the order the blue-haired bitch directed towards the column of children that he was guarding on their way to one of Orochimaru's concentration camps? One child had collapsed prompting the woman to slap him with a whip into the willingness to walk further. What will is there when his family is dead? The child stood up and joined back to the group, whimpering and shedding tears as he did. The test subjects. The future test subjects, enslaved children from. The few villages on the borders of the land of iron. The blue-haired bitch Gurin appeared before him, while the other twelve shinobis of the Odogekure guarded the column of slaves while they walked by the narrow cliffs in one of many hills of his country. They finished the last raid on those villages. Orochimaru was smart enough not to use the children of the land of rice paddies, but in order to repay his generosity, they had to perform these types of missions for him. Among other things. Genyumaru thought that Orochimaru probably wanted to use many of them for his experiments, but even he alone would not fare well against all the clans of the newly formed village of Odogekure. Disgraceful. What's up with you, Genyumaru? Guren asked him seeing him frown. Nothing, just tired from having no rest. That's all. PFF. It seems like you and your countrymen aren't that tough as you wanted to believe. She taunted him, but he ignored her provocations. How will an enslaving bunch of children help the Odogekure prosper? He asked her back. Guren snorted at his question. It won't. This is a gift for Orokimurusama. The feeling of disgust and shame had filled Genyumaru as he heard her words, but he relented. It was needed. For now. What does he plan to do with them? No idea. And it's not your business to stick your nose into, anyway. You are from the land of iron originally? He asked her after some time. She was very ruthless against these people for some reason. He heard some rumors that propelled him to ask this question. Rumors of a crystal release appearing and destroying the entire village in that country. The only other crystal release user he knew of was her. Yes, Guren answered emotionlessly. Genyumaru decided it was better not to provocate her further. He wanted to go back to his new village. He actually wanted to bring glory to his village, his fatherland. 
selfish daimyo, wicked missingnans, loyal psychopaths. These were the things he wanted to purify his homeland from. One day. One day I will. Genyamaru thought as they approached a northern hideout, delivering the prisoners as was ordered. Kanahagakur no Sato, May 4th, Formation 8. Naruto said. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Wind style, vacuum great sphere, Sasuke exclaimed, unleashing the great ball of fire towards the river, with Naruto increasing its size with his own sphere of wind a second later. As a part of his team-building exercises, Kakashi had them do a bunch of collaboration techniques to increase their familiarity with each other. For now, they got used to supplementing Sasuke's fire attacks with Naruto's wind ones. Sasuke smirked in pride thankfully nodding towards Naruto. He has gotten out of his shell a bit for the duration of their team's existence but was still as unsocial as ever. I'll show you one day, Itachi. Bypassing his initial surprise at Naruto already having a large arsenal of wind and water style techniques, Sasuke mused that it would help him big time when the time to kill Itachi comes. It was good that Naruto seemed to be willing to help him with his elemental training and was generally interested in collaboration for whatever reason. Swallowing his pride for a moment seemed like a wise decision back when he actually asked for help, it seems. Looking towards the other part of the training ground, Sasuke saw Sakura sparring with Kakashi in Taijutsu. She began learning Genjutsu right after the second step in their training that Kakashi introduced. When do you think we'll get higher ranked missions? He asked Naruto. Soon. I hope. Naruto answered. I don't think I can survive these boring dranks anymore. Hn. It seems that they're finished as well, Naruto commented once he saw Sakura go to rest by one of the trees after a spar, followed by Kakashi Sensei. Let's go and see if Sensei think it's time for us to do a higher ranked ones. As they approached the remaining two members of Team 7, Naruto asked if they were ready for the first crank mission. After all, they already did 28 dranks since their team was formed. You're right. I do think you're ready for a crank mission. Kakashi said getting a smile from both Sasuke and Naruto. Sakura seemed unsure of herself for a moment but nodded in support of her teammate's intention. We can go and take one after the lunch break. But the mission itself will most likely start tomorrow or some other day. They're not always instant like the dranks are. After the short break, Team 7 headed towards the Hokage's tower at a slow pace. It was a sunny day like every other and the streets were bustling with happy folk that went on their own way. What do you think the mission will be like? Sakura asked, placing a pointy finger on her mouth in a thinking pose. Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Probably nothing too dangerous, we're still rookies. Sasuke walked in silence as always, while Kakashi read his favorite book. I just hope nothing bad happens while we're at it, Sakura confessed, feeling a hand being placed on her shoulder and turning her head seeing it was Naruto's who smiled kindly to her. Don't fret about it. You've gotten strong enough for anything we could encounter on the standard crank mission. And if we do encounter something more dangerous, remember we have Kakashi Sensei on the team. Thank you, Naruto. Words of her blonde teammate were always encouraging and Sakura was grateful for them. It was more inspiring when she heard some praise from him than a simple grunt from Sasukakan. Yet also she felt that she would be safe with not only Kakashi Sensei around, but also him for some reason. Soon they got to the Hokage's tower and entered inside. It was a bit weird that they wouldn't be getting a mission from the standard office in the academy. But it was probably due to the fact it was not a drank or anything. Ah, Kakashi, it's good to see you. The Sandame Hokage exclaimed as he saw their Jonin Sensei enter his office. You too, Narutakun, Sasukakun, Sakurakun. The old Hokage acknowledged their presence getting a bow of respect from the three young genins. I'm here to request permission for the first crank mission for my team, as per your rules regarding the rookie genin teams, Hokagesima, 
Kakashi said. Getting a nod from the Hokage, who stood up and walked towards one of the bookshelves by the wall, Kakashi got a scroll that the old Hokage took with the following orders. Give this scroll to the Border Guard Mission Department in their headquarters. You know where they are. Thank you, Hokagesima. Kakashi said. Getting another nod from their leader as well as the words of good luck, Team 7 bowed once again and left towards the designated building. Border Guard Mission Department was one of the units of the Kanoha Standard Forces that was composed of many Jonans and Chunans who chose to join it as it was relatively safe during the peace times and had a good salary. That didn't mean the job itself was easy. It was probably one of the more dangerous ones, even if it was classified as only a brank mission for the borders of the nations from where the attack could be expected. Genin teams were for that reason directed to the safe borders of the land of T where no conflict or at very least minimal one could be expected. Okay, Team 7. Tomorrow at 7 a.m., be at the front gate with the clothes you think you will need for a two-week trip. As well as the shinobi gear and food supplies. Don't be late. Yes, Kakashi sensei slash Kakashi, said Naruto and Sakura respectively with Sasuke omitting the correct title. Reminder to work on his manners sometimes. Kakashi thought. A trip to the border after making sure that his team got the necessary equipment for the two-week-long mission, Kakashi decided to depart. By traveling with ninja speed, he calculated they would arrive at the border of the land of T within the five-day time replacing the current team there for the duration of one week, two at most if anything goes the bad way, or a new team replacing them becomes absent. After the four-day travel, they arrived at the main base, Shoryuji, earlier than they thought. The base was responsible for deploying shinobis to the various patrols. Inside of the minor camp, there were around twelve higher-ranked ninjas, with few tables around and maps of the border on its walls. The camp itself was basically a cave that housed the Leafnans before they were directed to their own sector to be deployed. Granted, this border was mostly patrolled by the new Genins as a part of their training. Long time no see, Hayamason. Kakashi greeted a fellow Jonin in charge of the sector they would oversee, handing him the scroll that explained the mission from the Border Guard Mission Department. Strange to see you on time, Kakashizan said the jonin in charge with serious expression. New rules for jonins, as you know for. Yourself, Kakashi said as he scratched his head. The reputation of being late was embarrassing when mentioned in front of his students. Ha! Huh. Doesn't matter. Here is your starting point and here is the subsector that you're supposed to patrol. It's five miles long, east and the west respectively. In the scroll it stated where should you place your defense mechanisms. We don't want Nadashiko Kunoichis to give us problems if some unlucky civilian gets killed in the forest. Hayama said before he turned to the genins of Team 7. My name is Shirakumo Hayama and I'm in charge of this sector. It is a tradition that the sector's captain wishes you good luck. So, good luck. He bluntly spoke with a stern mask on his face. Be sure to listen to your Jonin Sensei and pay attention to everything he says and instructs you here. Who knows, one day, you might become captains of your own sector. Hayama quickly finished and shook hands with each of the Genins, not wasting his time on pointless talk or anything else. Dismissed. Team 7, Cave Camp Their camp was located at the small cave by the local river. A good place for fishing the meals if needs be. Granted, Kakashi had them bring the imperative supplies, which included the ready-made food. Aside from that, they were given the necessary gear and traps to set along the border from Shoryuji base. For the first day, with Kakashi's explanation, they learned how to set the traps properly and where to actually place them, according to the instruction that Captain Hayama gave. Naruto restrained himself from using the shadow clones for this occasion. As per Kakashi's suggestion, his teammates needed the experience too, so countless supplies of blonde heads were out of the question this time. Aside from the regular patrols that they had, Kakashi also had them hunt for food. It was mostly fishing, though. 
at the end of the fourth day. Sakura and Sasuke were sleeping in the cave as the night fell and the sun settled. Kakashi and Naruto were outside, overlooking the border's forest quietly from the top of the cave's hill. Kakashi had a small flashlight stuck inside his mouth throughout his mask, directed towards the book he was reading, with nothing better to do apparently. At the same time, Naruto was looking towards the forest in front of him. Animals were asleep, with owls and other night birds producing sounds of the night. It was peaceful and fulfilling. A perfect opportunity for meditation. Yet, he also felt a bit uneasy. It reminded him of the loneliness in his early childhood as he looked towards the moon. Most noticeable light in a sea of stars. Just like me in the village. He thought bitterly. You know. Kakashi began, breaking the comfortable silence between them. Your brooding is more fitting for the Uchihas than the name you have. Did you know many senjus before they died out to know what were they like, sensei? Five or six, perhaps seven, Kakashi said to him absently. And none of them were broody, I can tell you that. Naruto smiled as he heard that, but did not comment further. Kakashi sensei continued talking, however. What is on your mind, Naruto? Kakashi asked him, closing down his book and turning off the flashlight. For a moment, silence appeared before them once more. I'm just, thinking about life, that's all. He did not speak further. An existential crisis perhaps? Probably, Naruto answered him. I'm mostly thinking about the mistakes I've made. Kakashi turned towards him, and though his mask covered most of his face, Naruto could still see sadness emanating from his one visible eye. You're too young to worry about that. Perhaps. But still can't help but do it. Silence. Over the years, I dreamed many times about the incident at the playground. It lessened with time. But the moment such as this I can't help but remember the day it happened. For a minute, Kakashi sensei did not reply, as he allowed him to linger on his thoughts. Naruto, you know the story of my father? Naruto looked at his sensei and gave him a slow nod. He heard the story about the white fang of the leaf from Kosuka. His surrogate uncle admired the former Hataki patriarch more than anyone else. Contrary to most of the village after his failed mission. Sakumo had an altar of devotion within the eternal genin. When I seven years old my father killed himself, Kakashi said after another moment of silence. I resented him for years after that and I aspired to be a total opposite of the things he stood for. I never showed it directly to him, though I suspect he knew while he was alive. A pause. After he committed suicide, I embraced the opposite worldview from him. Where he valued comrades, I valued the rules and mission. Just to ensure something like that would never happen to me. Second pause. It was only when Abito disobeyed me during the mission that I led, and went after Rin when she was captured. That was the first time in years that I felt the same way as my father probably did after his failed mission. Abito's words also struck a chord, I admit. Said Kakashi as he chuckled for a moment. Those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum? Abito said that? Questioned Naruto. He did. Nodded Kakashi. Nobody blames you for that and most of the villagers have already accepted that you weren't at fault, ignoring their initial shock. As Naruto looked at him with an unbelieving smile, Kakashi continued. Barring the few exceptions. I guess Sandaima-sama did well to quell most of the initial anger with the time. Said Kakashi. You have people around you, who care about you. Including me. And none of us blames you for that. Before my father died, he didn't have anyone to support him. His closest friends shunned him. A third pause. I resented myself for many things. For Abito's death, for Rin's death. For not being able to help your father during the Kyuubi's attack. For letting you live on your own early on. 
and for abandoning my father in his greatest hour of need. Kakashi said sorrowfully. Don't become like me, Naruto. Learn from my mistakes. Don't let yourself become a self-loathing and bitter man. It will hinder your growth both as a shinobi and as a man. You have beaten yourself long enough about the playground incident, Naruto. Don't waste your youth regretting over things you had no control of. It never ends well. And when it doesn't, it just creates more space for resentment until you decide to stop. But then, it might just be too late, for some things cannot be taken back. I understand, Sensei, Naruto admitted. And do not become something you are not. Do not become the opposite of what you are in order to please the system. His tone became a bit happier as he spoke the next words. Sometimes, I shudder at the thought you could become an attention-seeking loudmouth. Worry not, Sensei. I feel a shiver down my spine when I think about it as well. Smiled Naruto. A fourth pause. Your father was a great man, Sensei, Naruto said. I have no doubt that he would be proud of you. I hope so, but I will never be sure. Naruto nodded before he smiled again. Although I don't know if he would approve of your choice of literature. A written porn, Sensei. He told him in a mocking tone. Romance erotica, Naruto. Kakashi corrected with a pointy finger to signify its importance. I was hoping we would run into some Nadashiko Kunoichis while we're on this mission. But for now, nothing. He said with a low chuckle. Uncle Jiraiya told me once that his second book was inspired by observing their life in their village, Naruto said as he placed his hand on his chin in thought. Though, he was always a bit uneasy when he talked about them. Giving me a strange look as he did. Who knows, maybe he arranged a marriage for you but was afraid to tell you about it. Kakashi suggested with a chuckle. Ha! Huh. It wouldn't be the first time for a Senju man to marry a Nadashiko Kunoichi. A notion that he had an arranged marriage was something he would have to ponder given the reaction he had from Jiraiya whenever the talk about Nadashiko came to be. Hopefully, Jiraiya didn't do something like that. Really? Questioned Kakashi. I thought their Kunoichis of their lines only give birth to girls. True. Nodded Naruto. But one head of the Senju clan did marry a Nadashiko Kunoichi and she gave birth to four sons for him. She did? Question surprised Kakashi. Granted, the personal clan history of the Senju clan was completely foreign to him. This was new information and he wouldn't miss it. Indeed. Smiled Naruto. She was the mother of Hashirama, Tobarama, Kawarama and Itama Senju, I never knew that. Admitted Kakashi completely surprised. Well, you do now. Nadashiko existed before other hidden villages and for that reason, it is not classified as one. They fought with. Shinoberators from the Land of Wind and for that reason they allied with the Senju clan bound in marriage because my clan also had problems with them too. But only for that purpose. They didn't fight against the Uchiha clan alongside us. Is there any reason she only gave birth to boys? Kakashi asked. Two of whom are something akin to mythological gods in the shinobi world. There is. And the reason is? Kakashi raised his visible eyebrow. Because our seed is strong, Naruto said, grinning from ear to ear. Tatori, a minor border town in the Land of Fire while sitting in the small tavern of the minor border town of the Land of Fire, Rokusho Aoi had never hated his decision to abandon his home village more than he did now. Granted, he had three years to reminiscent about his past decisions, but he was never so cornered as he was now. Betraying his village because Hanzo the Salamander promised him a rank of Jonin in Amage Cure if he spied on Kanoha for him. As proof of his loyalty, all he had to do was deliver him the informations regarding the inner happenings of the village that was harder to get from the outside, occasionally. The status and identity of the Kanoha's Jinchuriki, the state of power after the Uchiha massacre, etc. 
but in order to fully prove his loyalty, he had to steal the Nidame Hokage's Sword of the Thunder God as well as the secret scroll of the Kanoha's interrogation techniques. He easily fooled his former academy student, Marino Idate, into stealing the scroll and the sword from the Hokage's tower. Not to get himself caught in the process. Aoi didn't actually think that the young fool could steal the scroll and the sword so easily. If he had the chance, he would either kill the brat after he ran to keep the secret. Or he actually would succeed, which was nothing but a miracle in Aoi's book. However, Ibiki Marino was quick to chase after him and I date all the way to the Amage Cure after the latter delivered the objects to him. He was fortunate to get to the Rain Village in time for Hanzo's forces to help him capture the Tokabetsu Jonin of Kanoha, though. Torturing didn't help, even when Hanzo allowed him to do it himself. Another test of my loyalty. What a way to prove it if not by harming your previous comrades. Loyalty? Aoi questioned himself. If one betrayed his own village, his own home. What certainty was there that he won't betray his new liege? Hanzo probably knew that as well. Surely, that's why he had him do all the trials to get there. But. Ibiki in the end, had managed to escape, just like his foolish younger brother moments before. And Aoi was left to face Hanzo's wrath all by himself. Initially, he thought he was safe. The ruler of Amage Cure was in conflict with the opposition forces from his own village. Another pawn would be welcome? Right? A pawn. He bashed Ibiki, calling him a pawn of Kanoha. But at least Ibiki had a roof above his scarred head. Aoi had nothing. He clenched the wooden cup he was drinking from in rage, before composing himself. Sighing as he watched the pitiful expression of his face in the water of his cup. After Ibiki fled, leaving the scroll and the Nidame's sword, Aoi thought he would prove himself to the salamander. But. The sword was a fake replica of the original. Its power being a temporary illusion. And the scroll was a bunch of gibberish that not even an analysis team of Kanoha would be able to comprehend. Both of them were fake in order to lure out the potential traitors. Ibiki probably chased after him in the first place, just to figure out where did the break in the security happened and which village was the perpetrator. Naturally, when he found out, Hanzo was furious and didn't hesitate to throw him into prison for interrogation. He luckily managed to escape the prison before they could kill him or torture him. So now he was here. Again fleeing another country. This time it was the land of tea, because those Nadashiko sluts weren't keen on taking a missing nin as a father material for their daughters. Aoi went there in the hope he could settle and live peacefully for the rest of his life. But Kunoichis of Nadashiko had an agreement with Kanahagakur, apparently, like some sort of alliance? He didn't know much, as the information gathering for rogue ninjas was much harder than it seemed. They chased him down, but he managed to escape. Again. Why would anyone become a rogue ninja in the first place? Aoi thought angrily as he took another cup of water to clean his throat. Thinking of his idiocy that has brought him so low in the first place. Looking towards the brown wooden ceiling of the tavern, Aoi considered his options. He could go to the newly formed Odogekure. Perhaps they would accept him. He could try to sell them some bullshit about Kanoha's education and they would place him into their academy. It wouldn't be a bad life to live. He would live. That was important. At one point he dreamed of living peacefully in Kanoha. Teaching brats and them worshipping him for being a kind sensei. But all of that was impossible now. He was a traitor to his homeland. A deserter. With nothing at his side but his newly made battle umbrella and a cloak with a conical hat to conceal his identity from any hunternans out there. And some money he robbed from some unfortunate soul out there on the road. Constantly suppressing his chakra was mandatory of course. If any even bothers to hunt me down, that is. It was both a hit of luck and a strike to his pride. But you lived with it. And you actually lived. 
As he stood up to leave, a new figure entered the tavern. Aoi saw a young boy with blonde hair and Kanoha's headband walking inside of the tavern he was currently in. The black cloth that held the headband flowing behind him as he walked. He recognized him immediately. It was Kanoha's Jinchuriki. Namike's Naruto. Quickly sitting down again, Aoi noticed one object on the boy's white belt. It was the same hilt of the replica of the Nidame's sword. Did the QB brat stole it? Doubt it. The brat was disciplined back in the academy. Silent and observing everything around him. And a good Kenjutsu user. Aoi knew it firsthand as he was the one in charge of teaching Bukajutsu to the academy students. That still didn't explain how he got the Nidame's sword. It doesn't matter. He was still just a genin. Perfect. He would follow the brat outside and ambush him. The Nidame's sword would be his. Aoi thought madly as a sense of euphoria overwhelmed him for the first time in years. Forest around the Tottori town for how long does he plan on following me? Naruto thought as he walked back to his team through the forest outside of the town. He would need to deal with his acquaintance first anyway, but he wanted for Awasensei to show himself on his own. Seeing as this was going nowhere, Naruto decided to act first. He turned around towards one of the trees and said, You can come out now, Awasensei. Kyubi brat, Aoi said venomously as he jumped down from the tree where he was hiding and following him. You know it's forbidden to reveal that to me, don't you, sensei? As if I care about some dumb law of Kanoha. Aoi snarled, standing not far from him in what looked like a battle position. So why are you following me? Naruto said emotionlessly. Whatever I did, I must have done it against the village. A village you're no longer a part of. Are you seeking me for us to join forces together perhaps? The sword. That's the sword of the Nidame Hokage hanging around your belt. Isn't it? Aoi asked with a hungry look in his eyes, ignoring the rest of his question. Naruto smiled as he took the object and lighted it up. Indeed it is. Do you like it? You can bet on that. Aoi smiled wickedly. Tell me this. How did you get that sword? Oh. Well, it belongs to me. So why wouldn't I have it? Naruto said acting innocently. The hell are you talking about, kid? How about you come and find out? And so he did, Aoi took out three kanais threw it at Naruto who easily blocked it with the Nidame's sword. Is this it? Naruto questioned himself. But as he threw the kunai, Aoi jumped into the air letting his umbrella flow under him. Senban Shower Aoi said as the rain of senbans was sent flying towards Naruto from the floating Ginthir umbrella. Wind style, swift wind wall. Naruto went through the hand signs and exclaimed as the wind barrier appeared around him, nullifying Aoi's attack. Only that, sensei? Naruto taunted. I expected more from you. Snarling at the provocation, Aoi charged towards Naruto with his umbrella, attempting to attack him with a clean hit. You might think you're tough, but you're still just a pawn of the Kanoha's higher-ups, wanting to use you as a weapon, Aoi said, hoping to create distraction and confusion within Naruto, but all he got was a smile and a good defense to his assault. Perhaps. But at least I have a roof above my head, unlike you. Said the smiling Naruto. Is that why you betrayed the village, sensei? Because you didn't want to be a pawn. For some odd reason, the question made Aoi widen his eyes, giving Naruto the opportunity to easily knock him down. Channeling the chakra into the sword, he sent the river of lighting towards his old sensei, knocking him unconscious. 7. At the same time, Kakashi appeared beside him, looking at the unconscious Aoi, just like Naruto did. Strange to see him in these parts. Didn't he defected to Amage Cure? Naruto asked. He did, although we didn't hear anything about him after his defection. It wasn't difficult to beat him at all. 
I thought he would be a tougher opponent given the fact he was an instructor at the academy back home. Naruto paused, thinking. Most likely it was because he suppressed his chakra for so long and it would take time to regenerate. His greed got him defeated. Naruto concluded. How did you ran into him in the first place? Kakashi asked. I sensed a familiar trace of chakra in this town and only went to check out if it really was my old academy instructor. But as I wasn't sure at first, I took out the sword of the thunder god, just to be sure. When I saw the shade of his green hair, my theory was confirmed. It's a good thing the old man told me about his treason previously. Indeed. Place one chakra suppressing seal on him, just in case. I want to check something. Kakashi said and Naruto did as he was told. Kakashi placed his hand on Aoi's head, surfing through his memories as Naruto watched in silence. After ten minutes or so, Kakashi removed his hand from Aoi's head saying with a hint of enjoyment in his voice. It seems that your comment gave him a feeling of deja vu. An old episode from his interrogation of Ibiki. Naruto slowly nodded. What are we going to do with him, sensei? Take him back to Kanoha? Nope. We'll destroy his body here. I already searched his memories and got the information I needed. I'll just report to the Hokajesima when we return to the village. He didn't have anything valuable in there anyway. What was that jutsu you used on him? It seemed similar to the techniques of the Yamanaka clan? Not quite. It is actually a psychomind transmission, jutsu used by our interrogation unit, a bit different from the one Yamanaka's use, but has the same background. Yamanaka and Noichi developed it to expand our analysis unit. Will you teach it to me? Naruto asked hopeful. It would be useful for him, just like Kakashi used it now. Maybe at later date, Kakashi said smiling, but then turned serious. We need to take care of him first. How do you know that jutsu anyway, sensei? Naruto asked. I copied it from Aoba by accident, Kakashi said sheepishly. Just don't tell him that. I won't if you teach me how to use it. Smirked Naruto. Team Seven's camp, where have you two been all this time? Sakura asked as they returned to their cave camp. Naruto went to check something suspicious in the local town, Kakashi answered. He can tell you more, later. Any strange activity here? No. Everything is peaceful and traps are all in place, sensei. Good. But we'll need to stay alert anyway for the time being. If Aoi managed to slip inside the country, there is no telling how many Miss Singnans, those better than him are currently in. And they are much better at suppressing their chakra without backlashes, unlike Aoi. Kakashi then went on to check other parts of the border and defense mechanisms that were placed alongside it. Huh. What was that all about? I'll tell you later. Where is Sasuke? Near the river. We went to fish us some dinner. Naruto grunted at her answer. I'll go and help him, prepare some salad to go along with it. As the night fell once more, Naruto and Kakashi took the night watch, sitting at the top of the cave as they did for the many past nights, talking about various things as always. Sensei, do you think Sasuke has a chance to kill Itachi one day? Naruto asked, I don't know. Admitted Kakashi. Itachi was a genius within his own clan. Many branded him even greater than Madara himself. A pause. It is up to us to help him if they ever meet, Kakashi said. Hoka Jessima told me about the Akatsuki and that they might come for you. If there are more of us, we might have a chance to beat whoever comes after you. I hope. Naruto nodded. I fear that Sasuke will lose it once he sees Itachi. He'll need to be emotionally prepared if he ever wants to face him. I know. That is one of the many reasons he was placed under me. Speaking of the team. What do you think of their development? Sasuke's and Sakura's. Naruto asked. Well, 
Kakashi said as he stood up as he stretched his muscles. Sasuke is given the training he needs and wants. I'm wary of teaching him too much. It's best if it doesn't go over his head and give him too much unnecessary confidence. I noticed. Do you think that's wise, though? He might think that you're holding him back. He can, but that's why I'm placing an accent on teamwork. That is the place where Sasuke needs most to work on. Hmm. Grunted Naruto. What about Sakura? At that, Kakashi looked at him with one of his eye smiles. I have to thank you there. Me? Naruto raised his right eyebrow. He did give few pointers to Sakura here and there, along with few motivational moments. But that was it. Unless it was enough. You are rather mysterious to Sakura, just like Sasuke is. But while he ignores her most of the time, you help her whenever I'm not there. You've became her inspiration to become stronger. Right. As long as she becomes stronger, I'm glad. It was also a nice feeling when someone looked up to him. She will. Genjutsu is her stronger side, but I can see her having a lot of potential in medical ninjutsu. As well as taijutsu. When she's finished with her initial genjutsu. Training, I'll sign her up in the hospital for their tutoring. Smart move, Naruto said. How long are we to remain here? It is nearly the end of two weeks since we came. I contacted Captain Hayama. He replied that the second team will come to replace us in two days. So until then, we are to remain here. Kanahagakur no Sato, Hokage's office, and they did. A day later new genin team arrived and replaced them with their duty. So now, Team 7 was in front of the Sandame Hokage, reporting on their first crank mission. With Aoi's appearance, it is automatically classified as a brank. Due to that, Hiruzen would need to deposit more money to the three genins and their sensei. But he was proud of how they handled their first mission entirely. As the Team 7 encountered a missing mean on this missions. Your first crank is upgraded to the brank. Congratulations on the first higher ranked mission, Team 7. The money will be deposited to your accounts tomorrow. Saratobi said, smiling. Thank you, Hokajesima. Team 7 replied. Go on then. You have the following week free from the missions. Kakashi, you stay. I have something I must speak with you. Sakura was the first one to talk after they exited the Hokage's tower. What will you two do with all this money? She spoke excitedly. 50,000 Rio was a good amount each of them got for this mission. 8. I'll save it for later use. Don't need anything expensive right now. Sasuke shrugged his shoulders. Same as Naruto. He was happy with how this mission went. Money didn't interest him, because he had plenty of it anyway. Are you three free right now? Their sensei, Kakashi, spoke behind them as he walked down the stairs. After getting a positive response from his students, he made a proposition. How about we go and celebrate your first prank? My treat. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.